All right, as we saw in the last step, our, our player got hurt from the monster, but we couldn't tell how much health we had left. We know that we set him up with three health, but we really need a visual indicator for that. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to... Uh, we're going to go to HUD and boxes, and let's just take a look at some things, and then we'll start actually making this work. Um, first of all, we already have a HUD area and a playable area set. For now, until we know what we're doing, we're going to leave it just that way. Yes, you can move the HUD around. You can move these boxes all around the screen. We're going to leave it just that way until we really know what we're doing, because we did a lot of new stuff in this tutorial, in this uh, series of, of code with the Sprite Zero Detection, which is kind of fickle. So let's, uh, let's keep it this way for right now, and I'm going to even tell you what values to put in for all this stuff. Um, right now, these are the tiles we have for our HUD. So you can see that's going to be a problem right off the bat. We don't have anything loaded. Um, and then we're going to talk about what these things do uh, in a second. So first of all, let's load the graphics for our tiles. I'm going to go to my pixel editor. I'm going to open up in NestMaker folder, tutorial assets. If I go to from beta, graphics, and I go into platformula tiles, actually, I've got uh, some HUD tiles already built. They're already in RGB format. So if I just import them and then go to save as, and I save them over the top of this project's HUD tiles, now I have HUD tiles. Easy. That was easy. We usually use the last sub palette for um, for the HUD. And if you can see the last color, and that is blue, so the, this is all, always going to show up as white, right? Um, so let's go to my HUD and boxes. And if I look at tiles, now I've got these tiles. Great. Uh, I, I'm going to set up my Sprite Zero detection. And we're going to let's talk about this a little bit more in depth. All right, what's actually happening? What this version of the, the, the base module allows us to do is split the screen between a HUD area and a playable area. And we're going to actually set the seam right here along the edge. And so this allows us to do scrolling things. So the bottom of the screen scrolls, but the, the, the info bar here, this HUD, stays Stays in place and the sprite zero is what's going to allow that to happen it's a little trick that the nest had where you could read uh, a weight uh, for sprite zero to collide with the background for a sprite the first sprite to be drawn uh, overlapping a background tile somewhere in the game that triggers a hit to the game to say okay hey something happened do you want to do something right now and what we're going to do is say yes we want you to uh, reset the scroll so above everything above me the scroll is always zero and everything below me it's always whatever the scroll value is variable scroll value okay so what we need to do is we need to set the sprite zero to be right at this corner right here i'm going to click use sprite zero detection and for this for this set for the base module always use sprite zero detection um, sprite zero index is going to be 127 and i'm going to talk about why as soon as we get this built out h blank time we're going to start with one and we might have to adjust that um, x is going to be 246 or so and we might change that a little bit and y is going to be about 30 and you can see i've got this little indicator here that says basically z it's a sprite zero the top left corner of it is right here in my HUD. Uh, and what is going to be drawn to the HUD right there is this graphic right here. And so this line is where it's going to see that, that bottom line right there. That's where it's going to see uh, overlapping between the Sprite Zero and, the, um, and this in order to know when to split between the HUD and the rest of the game. Um, so, and what does Sprite Zero look like? What is, what, if, what is this value right here, 127? Well, if I look at my tile set for my player, for my game objects, I should say, this is Sprite 127. If I counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 9, 15, and I count it all the way down, this is 127. So what I'm telling it to do is draw this fully opaque uh, tile right now, which is going to be a brown, uh, I think it's going to be brownish in color. Um, draw that in, that in that place, and that place was... Uh, 246 by 300. So it's going to draw a brown square right there. That brown square is going to actually be behind the background. The only way that we're going to see it is if there's transparent pixels in the background, if the background has black to it. But we could end up editing that sprite to exactly match what this looks like 
and put it behind it. And that's what Super Mario Brothers did. It made a coin in the shape of the coin and put it behind the coin. And that's where the Sprite Zero hit hit. We could do something similar, but we're, we're going to see it. So we want to get used to seeing it just so you know and understand what, what's happening with it. Um, let's just make sure that that's working. I'm going to export and test and I should see the black HUD at the top of the screen. It's not going to have anything in it yet, uh, but I will see a black HUD there. And now I've got a black HUD. And if you see right here, you can see where that brown uh, sprite is being drawn right there. See that? It's sticking out of the white. This, where my mouse is, that's where it's actually colliding. Okay, so we need to see health in this game. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my HUD variables. And I can see these are variables that I've already got set up in my game. Uh, the, the Nestmaker already knows they are. I could change the names of these. Like I could change this to my whatever. And now I've got a variable called my whatever. And its initial value is seven. Awesome. I could do that if I wanted to. I, I you know, it's not going to hurt anything. I, but um, the ones that are defined, my health, my score, this actually is generally my keys. But when I was making the Christmas game, I made it my gifts uh, and my money. Those are ones that some of the default scripts that you might end up using utilize. So I would keep those in place. I would keep those the same unless you until you know what you're doing. I'd keep those the same. Um, but we want to activate my health. We want to actually see that representing the screen. And we could do it as a number. So let's let's do it as a number first. I'm going to go to HUD elements. And that was element number two. And I can even see it says element ver my health. I'm going to say that it's going to be a number type. And it's going to be represented by two places. This is how many places the variable is going to be. Um, and then I can move it around. And I'm going to write the for element one, I'm going to use text type element. And I'm going to write the word health. And I'm just going to put it down here like this. Okay, and this should end up showing my health. But what I have to do is I have to match this to my player. So I have to match it to my player. If I remember um, my game object for my player, I started him with three health. So I want to make sure that my HUD box, it's kind of a special case. I want to make sure my HUD box, uh, my health variable starts with three. So right now it's gonna, sh it should show the number three underneath health. Let's check that out. It does, and if I get hit, it goes to two and one, and I die. Okay, and it actually looped back around, and that's basically sixteen. Um, so uh, I never really use health that way, but you could. You could use health with a number like that if you wanted that a large meter that controlled health. A lot. Some games had that, like your energy, like Metroid had that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to end up using uh, not using a number. Instead, I'm going to use variable tiles. And this is what you would usually think of as health, like a Legend of Zelda heart container type thing. So what it wants to know is, um, what will my full tile look like? It's going to look like a heart. And what will my empty tile look like? I need to pick something. If you see a white square here, it means that you haven't picked an empty tile type and it will break your HUD and it won't work right. So I need to pick something. I could pick an empty graphic. Um, I'm going to pick an X though, just so I can see that. And I'm going to tell it that its max value is going to be three. So I'm going to have uh, hearts now drawn instead of numbers. And when it's full, it's going to be the heart graphic. And when it's empty, it's going to be the little X graphic. Let's take a look. Three hearts. And so let's solve the problem with death. What's actually happening at death is the character is getting destroyed. Literally, it's disappearing from the game and it's creating the player death object. So in object details for the player death object, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's got an animation speed. And at the end of the animation, I'm going to have it restart the game. Very, very simple. Um, let's test that. So now if I run into this guy a couple of times, it will create this object. And then when that object's done with its animation, he'll go away, he'll die. 
I don't know if I ever finished setting that animation up, by the way. Let's see. There we go. I don't think I did. So let's do this real quick. Um, what just happened was at my end animation, remember I had put restart game. Now, this is something that happens and it's going to be a little bit frustrating and we are working on a good solution, but it did not make it into 4.1.0. Um, what happened was I hit the X button instead of close and this wasn't locked in. So one of the things that you can do to sort of make sure that that gets locked in is go ahead and change the tab. And if it's still there, it's locked in and don't hit the X, hit close. And now if I look back, it'll be back. And there it is. Okay, so now when this animation is done, um, I've got an eight frame animation. And for the last couple of frames, it's actually going to show this instead of being gone. I have I forgot to make the, the animation transparent, but it'll still it'll still sell the idea. So I'm sorry. Let's try that one more time with the death animation here. And there we go, restart the game, refills my health. So that's a little bit about how to set up the HUD. I'm gonna show you one more thing um, with the HUD. You can also create what are called assets. So I'm gonna add an asset and I'm gonna rename this asset uh, arrows. And I'm gonna make it wide and I'm gonna make it up, up, down, down, left right b a and then power awesome so this is my little thing called arrows um and i need to make sure again that i don't leave any of these white i fill them all in or i shrink it if i want to um, but now if i go to hud elements i'll just pick an arbitrary one down here um, and i'm going to use hud asset and say which asset do i want to use i'm going to use the arrows now I can actually place that entire thing. This is great for like making a frame around which weapon you're gonna use or if I wanted to put like a pixel portrait up there or something like that. And now my arrows will be up in my HUD. Now, I noticed that at the top of the screen, these turned brown and we're going to talk a little bit about why it has to do with the scrolling engine updating attributes so how i can fix that in a really simple way now um, there's there's a longer fix but there's a simple way since this game is going to run screen by screen by screen i'm only going to be in one screen at a time i can go to screen info i could tell it to make a single screen game and i could do that in all my screens i could say screen info it's a single screen game and lastly i need to make sure that at the top of my screen all of these tiles are set to sub palette four now i can change the sub palettes of these with the one or with the q w e and r keys so for instance on these on this grass if i use the r key it's going to change the grass to this sub palette if i use the e key it changes it to this sub palette. If I use the W key, it's that. And if I use the the Q key, it changes them back to normal. With these, I want to make sure that they're all the R key. And I want to do that for all active screens. Like this. And so basically what I'm saying is the HUD area is always, always, always going to use this sub palette. And that'll get rid of that little weird quirk. And there we go. So now when I go to the next screen, everything loads as I'd expect. And so, awesome. So I die, game restarts, perfect. And that's a little bit about how you can set up a HUD and you can use the HUD to track score and anything else you can think of. Um, there's also a cool uh, Sprite HUD that one of the Nestmaker users has developed a plugin for. We'll talk about that in future tutorial. Uh, next, we're going to look at how to sort of tell your story using text and dialogue um, and, and incorporating that into your game.